Okay. So, all right. So we got midnight here and festival. All right. So we're gonna see a demonstration of. of okay. Of, this is how this is how you deseed the sorrel. Yeah. This is a tool especially for deseeding. Mm, on and, oh, pretty cool. And the fruit stays intact. Oh, nice, nice, nice. So this, this is a special tool, or you yes, could. Yes, it is. It appears that you could basically just get something similar to this and, exactly. and get it done. Exactly. Mm, mm. Can you do one more demonstration? Just, just sure, want to see this. Sure. Yeah, yeah. See how simple this is, guys. Yeah. Here we go. Here we go. All right. And so, do people put sorrel out to dry or no? Yeah, you can. Yeah, you can, right? Yeah, you got too much, this will make it a lot easier to dry it. Okay. Also, normally, you know, we used to peel it. Yeah. And so your hands would get all red. Right. Now, with this tool, you just pop it on your hands. And, and that's good. Red. Yes. And then you can easily dry it down. Yeah, excellent, excellent. Say that's the difference between a, this and then peel it for yourself. You peel right. it, then you have to do like this mm. to take it out. Right, 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 right. Maybe, right. Up, maybe in pieces. Yeah. Then with the tool now, yeah. you have everything in there. Everything, time. yeah. And so there's there's no difference in terms of the process no. relative to midnight and, 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 and festival here. No. Preparing it? No. Sometimes. Awesome. All right, guys, thank you so much. You're welcome. All right, once more, a, a, a demonstration of, of festival and midnight sorrel fruits here at UVI's uh, School of Agriculture Experimental Field uh, out here at the university. Okay, so we have two new uh, types of sorrel here, and Dr. Zimmerman is going to talk about uh, the sorrel plants. As you can see here, uh, two sets. The unique leaf on this variety. Okay. This one is called Midnight. It's called Midnight. Yes. And so before we go into uh, the new, the new, uh, so the sorrel here, you're saying this they're going to be available uh, for the public to farmers. Uh, and so we don't have this currently in the territory, or at least on Saint Croix. But it's here. I know. Yeah, it's right here. You're right. We're still growing it <laughs> right. to produce seed. Okay. So you have to have it flower and fruit. Okay. And then you have to let that seed capsule mature okay. to get the seed. Okay. So but we got the fruit and we're doing data collection on the fruit itself right now on all of these. Okay, so now let's talk about them. So and, and this is a unique normally you don't think of sorrel in April. Right. You think sorrel for Christmas. Right. For festival. Right. That's why right. We're naming that one festival. So this is name what? This is This is midnight. Midnight. And over there we got festival. And over there we got festival. What's the difference? Okay. I got years ago, eleven years ago, I started breeding sorrel. I took some of the Caribbean varieties. I got one variety out of Trinidad that's black, one out of St. Kitts that stay neutral. Mm. I also went to the USDA Germplasm Repository in Griffin, Georgia, and they have all plant germplasm there for agriculture. And I got their collection of sorrel. Mm. And from there, I picked two uh, lines. One was from Ghana, and the other one was from Nigeria. Mm. Ghana had a unique leaf to it, so I liked that char leaf characteristic. The one from Nigeria had a larger fruit. Mm. So what I did is I crossed them with the black one that we had from mm, Trinidad. Nice. And then I grew them out for t two generations up to the grandchildren. Wow. And then when we get the grandchildren plants, we crossed them with the day neutral one from St. Kitts. Mm. So we're bringing together the Caribbean and Africa wow. into these varieties. So that's why we have festival and midnight. And that's why we have so, festival and midnight. So yeah. when you talk about, you know, having different generations, what's the, the, the time period for this to um, occur? Well, each time you make a cross, and it's kind of uh, challenging to make the cross yeah. because uh, sorrel is a hibiscus. Mm. Most people know the hibiscus flower. Right. But I, this sorrel will produce and set seed before the flower opens. Ah. So around 4 o'clock in the morning, the pollen is shed mm. as the male part of the, the flower. Right. So it's on the thing by the female part and it will start to set seed. So what you have to do is the night before, like around 9, 10 o'clock at night, when the flower bud is coming out, you have to open up the flower, mm. take off all the male parts, 
And then what I put on is a coin envelope, a paper condom, to you know, keep the flower clean. And then the next day, take from a flower and pollinate it, so they cross-pollinate. Okay. And then from that, you save the seed. Okay. Okay. So you can get about uh, 25 seeds from a cross. And, and then you just plant that out, and you get a lot of different things. Before Hurricane Irma and Maria, I had over a hundred different types of sorrow. Wow. I almost lost them all after the hurricane. Wow. These are two that we mm. were able to keep that to survived after the storm. Wow. The, uh, we had no current, you know. Yes. And so the seeds in the lab, they got warm, it got moist in there, and they lost viability. But we had purple ones, we had striped ones, we had bronze wow. ones, we had white ones. Wow. We had all sorts of different types. As I said, we had over a hundred different types. And these were two that we selected, and I'm glad we did, and found that still had some seed germination, and were able to uh, keep the plants alive. And then from that, we kept doing selections for a couple of years to get a clean variety. So, Doctor, uh, so is the taste different with each sorrel, or no, generally? No, they're, they're, they're sour. Right. Sorrel is sour. Right. right. Some people call it the Florida cranberry. Right, right, so okay. It's sour. Okay. And then some people, it, sorrel has different names. In Africa, depending on the country or the region, yeah. it has different names. Mm. Like they also call it Roselle or Rosella. Mm. Flower of Jamaica is what right. they call it in uh, Mexico. Right. And in Florida, they call it, you know, the Florida cranberry. Mm. So in terms of our weather conditions, it is, it is perfect for this type of fruit? Yes, and we crossed in the day neutral so that we can expand production mm. into like it is April now. Yeah. We should be able to produce all the way into May, June. It's mm. has been our highest bearing variety, Midnight. Midnight. All right, let's go have a look at Festival. And so the name behind Festival, Dr. Zoom. It's a uh, Christmas festival. Oh, nice. These both are Crucian names. Right. So you can see these have the normal leaf type of... Ah, and so they produce less sorrel? Well, yeah. we've been harvesting from these. Okay, you've been so harvesting. These, these, you can see little white eggs. Right. We harvest, we've been harvesting for over a month. So right. a lot of the fruit has been taken off. Right, right, so, right. So these, we're looking at production. So two weeks after the flower opens, you can harvest the fruit. Mm. The seeds will not be mature, mm. but the fruit has reached its maximum size. Mm. After that, it's the seeds are just developing inside the bowl, mm. inside the fruit. What are some of the other um, plants uh, that UVI grew around here? Well, other research that I do here, I, in the past I used to do papaya. Okay. I did papaya breeding and we had a dwarf compact variety, so a lot of people know me for papaya. Yes. But I moved on from that into sorrel breeding and also sweet potato breeding. 